Jim Acosta of CNN, fighting for the American people. Never giving up against the opposition. Asking the tough questions that need to be asked. Please, Jim Acosta, please save the American people from the tyrannical President Trump. We believe in you, Jim. CNN is objective. CNN cares about the American people. CNN has all the facts. CNN. CNN. Jim Acosta, America's sweetheart. I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. I'm staying right here. Jim Acosta, fighting back against the system. Uh, if, I, if I may follow up on some of the questions that have taken place so far here, sir, and I don't know which microphone to, ha to hold here. I've got three microphones. You have but, uh, the people, and your um, ratings aren't as good as some of the other people that are waiting. They're pretty good right now, actually, Mr. Okay. President. But, Go ahead, Jim. Uh, if I Jim Acosta asking the tough questions. Mr. President-elect, Mr. Ahead. President-elect, since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you. Not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization you are attacking our news organization. organization. Can you give us a chance no, to ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state, can, Mr. President-elect, can you state categorically, Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? You're rude. attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? Can you, not give you a can, you state, can you state categorically? You are fake news. Sir, Go ahead. can you state categorically that nobody... No, Mr. President-elect, that's not... Jim Acosta. America's true hero. Can't hear you anymore. What's that? I will. You got it. I will. Jim Acosta on immigration. This whole notion of, well, they could learn, you know, they have to learn English before they get to the United States. Are we just going to bring in people from Great Britain and Australia? Jim, it's actually, I have to honestly say, I am shocked at your statement that you think that only people from Great Britain and Australia would know English. It's actually, it reveals your cosmopolitan uh, bias to a shocking degree that in your mind, no, this is an amazing, this is an amazing moment. This is an amazing moment that you think only people from Great Britain or Australia would speak English is so insulting to millions of hardworking immigrants who do speak English from all over the world. Jim, have you honestly, Jim, have you honestly never met a, an immigrant from another country who speaks English outside of Great Britain and Australia? Is that your personal experience? But that's not what you said. And it shows, it shows your cosmopolitan bias. And I just want to say, engineer the I racial say, and ethnic flow of people into this country. Jim, this that is one of the most outrageous, insulting, ignorant, and foolish things you've ever said. Jim Acosta on fake news. And I would just say, sir, that, that journalists make honest mistakes, and that doesn't make them fake news. But uh, the question but that when I journalists have, make honest mistakes, they should own up to them. Uh, sometimes, and a lot of times you don't. But there's a difference. There's a very big... I'm sorry, I'm not finished. There's a very big difference between making honest mistakes and purposefully misleading the American people, something that happens regularly. You can't say, I'm not done. You cannot say, you cannot say that it's an honest mistake when you're purposely putting out information that you know to be false, or when you're taking information that hasn't been validated, that hasn't been uh, offered any credibility, and that has been continually denied by a number of people, including people with direct knowledge of an instance. This is something uh, that... I I'm speaking about the number of reports that have taken place over the last couple of weeks. I'm simply stating that there should be a certain level of responsibility in that process. This was not, this was not, Ryan, uh, I called on Jim. The, this is not uh, the, the line of questioning that I was going down, but can you cite a specific story that you say is intentionally false, that was intentionally put out there to mislead the American people? 
Sure, the ABC report by Brian Ross, I think that was pretty misleading to the American people. And I think that it's very telling that that individual had to be suspended because of that reporting. I think that shows that the network took it seriously and recognized that it was a problem. Sarah, Jim? If I may, though, I was going to ask a question about something uh, well, else. you used it on something well, else. Sarah, Jim? Sarah, if I may. Sarah, I think it's yeah, we're going to keep moving, guys. If I can ask about the, the other president's uh, accusations. I'm moving to a different gym. I'm so, sorry. I know, but I didn't get a, a chance to ask the Jim, Jim, I'm going to say once and for all that I'm moving on to Jim Stinson, and I'm not taking another question from you at this point. Sarah, a question Good. about so investment, to your tax on investment the taxes. taxes. That's okay. I, I would like to ask the question that I had about these accusations of misconduct against the president. You said that he's denied them. Can you say whether or not they are false? I'm not That's going to respond to another question. Go ahead, Jim. Jonathan Carl was asking you about, you said that the leaks are real, but the news is fake. I guess I don't understand. Uh, it seems that there's a disconnect there. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be fake? The reporting and, is fake. And if I look, ask, look, I just want to ask Jim, you know what it is? Here, here's the thing. The public isn't, you know, they read newspapers, they see television, they watch. They don't know if it's true or false because they're not involved. I'm involved. I've been involved with this stuff all my life. But I'm involved. So I know when you're telling the truth or when you're not. I just see many, many untruthful things. And I'll tell you what else I see. I see tone. You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. One more follow-up. Should I let him have a little bit more? Well, what do you think, Peter? Yeah. This, Peter, I should just, I have a, let him have a little bit more? This, sit down. The, sit down. Just, we'll, just we'll because of the, we'll get Just it. because of the attack of fake news and, and uh, attacking our network, I, I just want to ask you, sir. I'm changing it from fake news, though. Do, doesn't that under very fake news? I yeah. know, but aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Jim Acosta on foreign policy. Mr. President, how's the meeting going so far, sir? <laughs> Any progress, Mr. President? Can we get there right? President, how's it going so far, sir? Very good. What do you think? Very, very good. Thank you. Chairman Kim, will you give up your Mr. Kim, will you give up your nuclear weapons, sir? I don't think Kim Jong Un is used to the voice of Jim Acosta of CNN <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah. Hey, if they're not going. Yeah, that's what I, that's not a shot to ask. All day long, man. All day long. It's certainly a shot to ask. Him, but that's all day long. That's the way it goes. Mr. President, did you agree to need nuclear Starting that process very quickly. Very, very quickly. Absolutely. Talk about auto warm beers. Uh, John Roberts, go ahead, John. No, no, John Roberts, go ahead. CNN's fake news. I don't take questions. I don't take questions from CNN. CNN is fake news. I don't take questions from CNN. John Roberts of Fox. Let's go to a real. Let's go to a real network. John, let's go. We're a real network too, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Jim Acosta on the branches of government. As you said, this was the Schumer uh, shutdown. How can it be the Schumer shutdown when Republicans control the White House, uh, the House, and the Senate? Come on, you know the answer to that as well as anybody. I mean, I, I, I have to laugh when people say that, oh, we control the House, the Senate, the White House, why can't you get this done? You, you know as well as anybody that it takes 60 votes in the Senate to pass an appropriations bill, right? You know that. I know. Okay, so if so you only have 51 votes in the Senate, then you have to have Democrat support in order to keep the government to fund the government. So that's the answer to your question. So the asked Congress to come up with a solution for the Dreamers. Uh, Congress uh, was in the room, members of Congress were in the room with the President last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to be a fairly productive meeting. And then the whole process got blown up. Uh, not, when, and, and, and when Republicans seems, tried, and, and, and if I may, it, it, it seems that the whole process was blown up by the president's comments. And when so Republicans not, tried to add, the Democrats when Republicans the tried to, when Republicans tried to add a discussion about Obamacare to the funding process in 2013, 
we are cre accused by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer of inserting a non-fiscal, a non-financial issue into the spending process in order to shut the government down. How is that not exactly what is happening today? There is no reason that you have to deal with DACA this week. There's no reason you have to deal with DACA before the end of February, excuse me, the middle of February. DACA doesn't expire till March 5th. This is purely an attempt by the Senate Democrats, led by Mr. Schumer, that's why we call it the Schumer shutdown, in order to try and get a shutdown that they think this president gets blamed for.